Hi, I'm Garm Break One, and this is Midgardia's Cool Crowdfunding Show. I'm here today with Maya Tavi. How's it going? Hey, it's going good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. So uh, you're here to tell, tell us about Dupli. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So um, some of your viewers may uh, remember me from some uh, indie Japanese tabletop role-playing game translations. Um, we had uh, Summon Skate and then Floria. And uh, we figured that we didn't really want to flood the market with just one RPG after another. And so uh, we have been trying to branch out into uh, card games, uh, indie card games, and also indie manga from Japan. And so as our very first indie uh, card game uh, project, we have Dupli. And uh, Dupli is a strategic card game for two to four players. Um, and it's uh, kind of a, almost like a diplomacy or like political posturing game. <laughs> so the story of Dupli is that you inherit this kingdom that your brothers have ruled before you. And one brother, you know, ruled with an iron fist and uh, some, you know, citizens fled and stuff like that. Another brother was... Uh, too lax with his rulings, and uh, it uh, let other countries see the weakness and kind of exploit that. And so you're coming in, and you have to decide um, how you should rule so that you can present the right front to all of your uh, opponents so that they don't come and attack you. And so the actual mechanics of the game are very much a rock, paper, scissors. Um, both the Japanese or the Japanese developers like to describe it as playing rock, paper, scissors with two hands. <laughs> so there are six cards. Um, they all interact with each other in different ways. Every round you play two cards and and basically you go through the uh, one beats the other, one negates the other kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's kind of the basics for it. Right on, right on. And uh, the art looks fantastic, by the way. I can see in the, the preview. Yeah, image. absolutely. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get some, some up there. But yeah, each of the cards has uh, very, very pretty uh, hand-drawn art from a uh, very anime style with kind of a... I love the, um, the kind of stained glass of the card backs and stuff like that. So... Um, an interesting thing about it is that so there's six cards and you each person when you play you get different numbers of those cards so like three of them you get two and three of them you get one of each but each player has the exact same cards in their hand so you know what everybody's hand is from the start and so there's a lot of psychology and trying to read your opponents in what are they going to play because you know what's in their hand, so you know what the options are. So you have to figure out what are they going to play and how are you going to counter that. And as each round goes around, you have less and less cards in your hand. And so it becomes easier to read your opponents because you know what they have left. But at the same time, they know what you have left. And so it's a very, just like rock, paper, scissors, it, it has very simple mecha interaction mechanics between the cards. It's very, very quick to learn. Um, you can sit down and explain it to somebody and a minute seriously <laughs> but then figuring out the strategy figuring out how to win is all about reading people bluffing um that kind of thing and so it's a very uh we we like to say it is surprisingly simple but uh deceptively deep so it's 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 also very quick uh i mean you could play a whole round or you could play a whole game in maybe 10 minutes so and it's, uh, it comes in this nice little uh, case, very easy to carry around in your pocket. I think it would be perfect to like take to conventions while you're waiting in line for a panel or something. You just whip it out and like, hey, hey, let's play it. Or like trying to decide whose turn it is to uh, order pizza after your D&D &D game. You whip it out and like, okay, let's let's do plea for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, so this is uh, not like a trading card game. This is more like, you know, a single game in a box. Is that correct? That is correct. So it comes with uh, enough cards for four, up to four players to, to run it. And um, it has two gameplay modes, basically. One is where everybody gets the exact same number of cards. 
Or if you have three or four players, it also has rules for a random mode where you all take a random hand of cards. And so then there is an added element of you don't know what everybody has. You know all the cards in the game, but you don't know what combinations everybody has. And so then it becomes, a, it's not quite as fine-tuned balanced as the main game is, but if you want to kind of spice things up and uh, make it more of a party game, it can go that way. And speaking of party games, if I if I have enough decks, can I play this with like 12, 14, 20 people? That is something that I would actually love to see people try and do. And that's uh, on our on our Kickstarter um, for the uh, we're going to have a tier where you can get two decks. And uh, I have a little note there like we'd love we'd love to see you uh, make the eight person invariant. <laughs> so I, I'm. I can't see why not um, if you decided to, to get the, the, that many cards together. It might get a little complicated, <laughs> but I could definitely see it turning into a big party game where everybody's throwing out cards and uh, attacking one another with them. So, uh, no, that'd be great. Right on. So uh, what, what's the price point of, uh, of Dupli? I know shipping costs are currently kind of in flux. Paper costs are kind of in flux. But like, what's the what's the target? So it's going to be about $20 uh, for the deck. And, um, you know, it's uh, it, it's a little bit more than you would get if you went out to, you know, a, a store and just picked up a random card game for four people. But at the same time, you know, it is an indie game. It's coming from Japan, it has the, the hand-done art. Um, and as always, with all Silvervine projects, um, a, you know... A large portion of all of the profits will go back to support the indie creators who create who made this. Um, we make that. That's always part of our contract. We want to help and support these guys. We also want to give them the uh, kind of the spotlight that we feel they deserve because these are people making amazing games um, that maybe aren't even in Japan aren't getting the kind of attention we feel they deserve. And so uh, we really hope that using Kickstarter and giving them kind of a global platform that they'll be able to connect with uh, fans worldwide and that their games can kind of get out there, you know? Yeah, and you know, English is the second most spoken, third most spoken? Third most spoken, I think, language in the world, so... Second? Yeah. One of the two. It's in uh, the top three. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, I... <laughs> sounds right, sounds right. Yeah. I think second. But... Uh... If you're watching this, the, there's there will be a little note right below me right now telling you uh, what it actually is. And so, uh, yeah, and the the folks who made uh, Dupli, um, real nice uh, group. They're called uh, Board Games to Life, um, and they are kind of like Silvervine. They are also a group that tries to do outreach with other indie creators. Um, they actually did a uh, campfire. Um, campaign for Dupli, which Campfire is kind of the Japanese version of Kickstarter. It's for uh, indie games and other projects to get funding over there, and um, it did very well. But the interesting thing was that some of the tiers that they offered were that they would um, do PR for other people's games. Like, if you buy our game, we will also advertise your game, and we will use our website to uh, send out, you know, to give do profiles on your games and stuff like that. And so I really liked that they are uh, that they are also trying to help bolster the uh, indie developer community in Japan. I thought that was really cool. Um, and you know, it's one of those games that as soon as I saw it, as soon as I saw that art, I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Like I, I was, I was afraid that they would have already been snapped up by somebody else because it was just really pretty. It, it had a successful campfire campaign, and so I was like, "I guess I'll try." But uh, no, they were, uh, they were very excited to be working with us. Um, and I'm, I think that you know we put a lot of heart into the uh, like the commercial, um, which will be up on our uh, Kickstarter, um, and it's just, it's a really good product. I mean, um, we didn't. As Silvervine, we didn't really have to do much with it. We just had to put the English on it, and we're kind of letting it for, speak for itself. Heck yeah. I do have one more question for you about uh, what's available at the Kickstarter. Absolutely. Can I get a, a big print of the card back? Because I would love that. It is beautiful. Wow. Man, um, that is something that 
maybe after the the campaign we'll we'll try and figure out how to do a poster size of it or something like that um that is something that we were considering possibly doing like a rule sheet or something uh in in poster size the the problem is is that we want uh Dupli to be something that people can buy and sell at their stores without needing extra components or anything and so all of the rules and everything will be contained in it so at this moment, we do not have any um, other products to offer, but that's some, that's definitely feedback that I want to take back to the uh, creators and see if they'd be interested in um, doing posters, things like that. Because, yeah, definitely, this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of art that we would love to uh, people to have, and I would I would also love to have a giant sized uh, stained glass deeply uh, art on my wall. Yeah, you know, it's the kind of thing you could sell to game stores and you know have a little display or whatever. And, oh, yeah. and give me one, because it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, anything else you'd like to highlight about uh, Dupli while we're here? Um, uh, just to say that our uh, Kickstarter will actually be launching tomorrow, uh, which is Tuesday the 22nd. <laughs> so um, we've got a teaser page up uh, today. Um, but yeah, tomorrow evening, hopefully, I will be uh, kicking it off. And um, we look forward to, uh, this is something that's kind of different from our TRPG stuff. And so we're hoping to reach out to a completely new community, bring in some new, uh, get some new Silvervine fans gathered into uh, our Discord. And um, we are hoping to uh, make some new announcements, uh, possibly during the campaign for some future projects that we have. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm 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 excited. I, I think this is uh I think this game is gonna go far and I can't wait to see people playing it. Right on, right on. Uh well Magitabi, it's as ever, great to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. As always, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to have you. And for those of you watching at home, there is a link right below this in the description. Go check it out. Uh look at that lovely art. It's it's gorgeous. I love it. And uh yeah. yeah. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Thank you.